Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 83. 83, folks. For those of you who have been with me from the beginning, riding gun with me, boy, I couldn't thank you folks enough. You guys are just, you guys are awesome. I mean, just incredible support, incredible feedback. It's just been an amazing ride, and I'm so thankful to be here with you piloting this ship. To those of you who have just joined me for the first time perhaps tonight, hey, welcome aboard. Happy to have you. Sit back, grab one of those red pills on your way in, and go ahead and eat it. You'll thank me later. To those of you who have um, donated to the GoFundMe, you you guys are amazing. Thank you very, very, very much. We're halfway to our goal for this first GoFundMe, and what the what these funds will do is they'll help facilitate some more of these trips, like the one I have coming up to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'll be leaving for Santa Fe uh, the middle of January, and that's basically being funded by this GoFundMe. That's how amazing you folks have been, and it, it's it's very humbling to know that you believe in my work, and it's very humbling to know that you trust me enough to report this story and report it correctly to you. And believe me when I tell you, I, I take it very seriously. I take what we do here on this podcast very seriously, and it's professionally, it's it's the only thing that I'm focused on right now. I don't have a nine to five job, none of that stuff. I am completely and utterly focused on this story right now. You know, I have some other things in the works. There's going to be some other podcasts that I'm going to be hosting and producing and creating, but those are going to be more... Uh, you know, easier issues, right? One of them is going to be based on the new Game of Thrones show coming up. Uh, I have a daily news show that I'm thinking about putting together where we talk about world news, the kind of the same way we do at the Daily Drop. And there's a couple of other things that are in the pipeline. Like I was saying, my uh, the, the owner of this channel, um, Lee, and sometimes on the show with me as well, he has another show that he's producing right now about... Um, like life coaching and relationships with an actual PhD. So that's going to be pretty interesting. He has asked me to do some hosting on that show as well. So of course, whatever he needs, I will jump in and and help him out. At the end of the day, I just want to create good content, folks. I just want to make sure that we have good content. And I want to make sure that every time you guys give me your most precious asset, your time, that you walk away feeling like, all right, that was fun. that That was a good 25 minutes. You know, Bobby delivered again. That's cool. That's good. That's what I'm looking for. Because in a world of choices, you folks keep coming here and you guys keep, you know, sucking down the content that I'm producing. And I just, like I said, it's very humbling and I take it very seriously. And believe me, if if you have some kind of constructive criticism, because I'm not a professional at this. This is, you know, this isn't like I didn't like I didn't go to school to be a, a journalist per se. So, you know, my my field of study is more political science and more the nuts and bolts of politics, mainly Near East policy, so the Middle East. But once I started, started, you know, covering this story the way I have been, it is, I've never been so engulfed by something and so, and so ready to take it to the very end. And that's where we're at with this story and with, you know, the generous funding of the GoFundMe that you folks have been so you know, willing to, 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 you know, help support the show. It's just, it's going to give us, it's going to open a lot more doors for us. It's going to make it a lot easier for me to bring you that, the, the really good content that you all truly desire. Cause at the end of the day, what we really want in this case, what we really want is we want some justice and we want these people who think they're above the law to really learn a harsh lesson. You know, what they what happened with Icarus, right? He flew too close to the sun and his wings melted. And that's what's going on with these elites. They they have got to the it's gotten to the point with them that nobody is there to hold them accountable. The media doesn't do it. Their their sponsors don't do it. Nobody does it. So that's what's opened the door for independent journalism and for people like me and for people like Tim Pool and for people like, you know, just insert content creator here. And there is a a trust between the audience and the creator that is, you can't mimic that on TV. You can't send Chris Cuomo an email and have him answer you. Whereas you can send us content creators because we're just like you. We're one of you. We don't feel like we're elite. We don't feel like we're above you. We're just, you know, I'm just a guy that happens to have a big fat mouth and, and happens to have a platform. And by the grace of the universe, here we are building it to a point where uh, I am like 14,000 downloads away from 200,000. 
It's mind boggling to think that I am only 14,000 downloads away from 200,000. And that's all you folks. That is all you. So when I come on here and we're, we're talking about this stuff, believe me when I tell you, I take it seriously and I, I value, I value your trust in me to come here for your Jeffrey Epstein news. So with that said, I have an article tonight about Prince Andrew from the Daily Mail. All right, this tool bag, this guy is absolutely positively ridiculous, okay? This guy thinks that the interview with Emily Maitlis went great. Prince was happy with it. Very good interview. Where, where is he living? Is he living on Uranus? He, he is not living on Earth. Earth to Prince Andrew. Hello? Earth to Prince Andrew. Nobody believes you, bro. Nobody. All right, so, headline. BBC's Emily Maitlis reveals Prince Andrew was happy with his Newsnight interview as she praises his candor despite car crash results. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, this should be a good one. It is widely regarded as the car crash, Hindenburg, interview that eventually forced Prince Andrew to step back from public life. But the Duke of York was happy after filming the Newsnight program about his relationship with convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, according to Emily Maitlis. The BBC presenter said she had not expected the furor over the interview by critics who lambasted Andrew for failing to show regret or empathy for Epstein's victims. Huh? You didn't expect that? Um, what? So... You thought you were going to run this interview, Mrs. Maitlis, and people were just going to be like, ah, that's all right. You know, his, his story checks out. Andrew's story checks out. He can't sweat. He was getting pizza. He's never met her. His fingers are too fat. Come on. This is all, these are all solid defense strategies here, folks. I mean, really? He repeatedly denied claims he had sex with one of the women, Virginia Roberts, when she was 17, but was then accused of lying by Miss Roberts. Oh, and accused of lying by me, by the way. And, okay, here we go, you folks. Ready? I have to do it. I just can't help myself. You know who else thinks that Prince Andrew is lying? Oh, here we go. Everybody in Alaska thinks you're a liar. They think you're a liar in New Mexico. They think you're a liar in Arizona. They think you're a liar in New York. They think you're a liar in Delaware, sir, and they think you're a liar in Florida. They think you're a liar in New Mexico's New Mexico. <laughs> you get where I'm going with this, right, folks? He's a liar. Nobody believes him, okay? I don't believe him. I'm, I'm sure most of you out there don't believe him. Of all the emails I have received about this case, only one person has sent an email to saying that they don't believe Virginia Roberts when it comes to this case. So... I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't know how you don't believe, and it's not her, don't believe, let's get something clear, it's not like I just believe whatever Virginia Roberts says, she has evidence backing this up, this stuff is corroborated, there's other people that were there, there's other people that saw her with this man, it is just absolutely, positively, so disgusting to me, to, for people to uh, deny that this occurred, it's so silly. The interview also led to renewed calls for Andrew, 59, to be interviewed by the FBI about his friendship with disgraced financier, pedophile, Epstein, who was found dead in his prison cell earlier this year. Miss Maitlis praised the Duke for his candor in answering her questions in an age when many public figures attempted to avoid scrutiny. He had no choice. What else was he, was he going to do? He knows what's coming down the pipe. He knows that the party is over for him. All right, and his candor? What do you mean his candor? He wasn't candid. He was very, he, he obfuscated and he lied and he threw up smoke screens. If he was being candid, he wouldn't have lied about that picture. He wouldn't have said, oh, I've never met Virginia Roberts. I have never, but that wasn't me in the picture. My fingers are too fat. What? I don't, I don't understand candor. There's no candor there. She said that after the interview, her impression from him was definitely that, it, that he had been happy with it. She told the Radio Times she had been shocked by the public reaction to it, saying, I didn't see it coming. Oh my gosh, really? Is she, she must be tone deaf too. She didn't see it coming? Anybody? I don't understand how as a journalist you didn't see that coming. I mean, it took three seconds to hear what he was talking about and I just put my hand to my head and said, oh my lord, what is this guy doing to himself? Now don't get me wrong, I'm glad that he gave the interview, but if I was his lawyer, there would be no 
way I would let him A, give an interview, or B, talk to anybody without being subpoenaed. Because this guy is obviously guilty. It wasn't an attempt to bring down the royals, just a chance to understand the story. Uh, is she doing some face saving here, folks? Is she doing a bit of safe facing, fa- uh, safe, safe face saving, so that she has access to the royals still? Could that possibly be what's going on? Come on, Miss Maitlis, I was starting to like you. She added, I admire him for his candor and his engagement with the questions in an age of so much deviation and circumnavigation and quite often a failure to put yourself up for scrutiny. Uh, what? Okay, great. Yeah, he sat down with an interview with you. He had no other choice. What was he going to do? The walls are closing in on him. His buddy Ghislaine, and she's missing. She doesn't, he doesn't, no one knows where she is. Everyone's abandoned him. He, it wasn't like Andrew was part of the trafficking ring, folks. He was the dumbass who got caught up in the honey trap, okay? He got caught up because he's a deviant, not because he's a sex trafficker. But unfortunately, your ignorance that she was trafficked does not uh, uh, absolve you of your crimes. A, she was underage, and B, she was a trafficked girl. And C, you enabled Jeffrey Epstein's behavior for years, Prince. During the interview, Prince Andrew said he did not recall meeting Miss Roberts and emphatically denied that he had sex with her. On the occasion, she said they first met in 2001 when she claimed she was trafficked to Britain by Epstein. Claims, okay, she's 17, she's on a plane, she's being used for sex, going across international lines from America to England. Sure sounds like trafficking to me, okay? And not only does it sound like trafficking, it it sounds like engaging in a criminal enterprise, a.k.a. Rico. And I don't mean Rico Suave, folks. I mean the same Rico charges that decimated the Italian community in the 80s. He also questioned Miss Roberts' account of them dancing of them dancing together at the London nightclub Tramp when she said he was sweating heavily. The Duke of York said he suffered from a medical condition at the time, which meant he didn't sweat. Okay. He also sought to cast doubt on the authenticity of a photograph that showed him with his arm around Miss Roberts' waist, but conceded that it was difficult to prove if it was a fake. Obviously, it's not a fake. The FBI has the picture. We saw the the photographer from New Zealand who took the pictures first. He came out. We'd read that article. He knows it's not a fake. The only ones saying it's a fake are Andrew's lickspittles. The only ones who are saying it's fake are Andrew's people. The rest of us know the truth. Andrew admitted he had let the side down. Again, what is this? What is he, a, a soccer player? What do you have, a soccer match? He scored an own goal. You let the side down? What does that even mean? You let your family down. You let your whole country down. You let the girls down. Really, though. That's who you really let down, Andrew. You're supposed to be a prince. All right? You're probably, a, is he, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing he's a knight, too. I think he's the knight of the garter. That's fitting. But honestly, you're, you're a prince. If you're hanging out with a guy like Jeffrey Epstein, you have your own daughters that are young, you don't stand up to this dude and say, screw you, dude, I don't want to be involved in that. What, are you crazy? And if you do have some sexual proclivities, right, there are places where sex work is legal. Go there and get involved. Do what you got to do, buddy. The girls could the, the, love to have the money. Come on, out, come out to Nevada. Go up to the chicken ranch. They'd love to have you. You can go have the Lamar Odom treatment. Andrew had admitted he had let the side down when he had failed to cut ties with Epstein immediately after he was jailed in 2008 for soliciting prostitution from a minor and registered registered as a sex offender. Not that he he let the side down by actually messing with Virginia Roberts. Oh, no, no, no. He didn't let the side down because he had sex with an underage girl when he was a prince and she was trafficked. Oh, no, 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 no. The only way he let the side down was because he was friends with Epstein and he didn't break it off. The, it's just absolutely and positively tone deaf the way these people think about life. The prince said he visited him in New York in 2010 after Epstein's release to break off the friendship, but regretted staying at his house while he was there. He told Miss Maitlis it was not something that was becoming of a member of the royal family, and we try and uphold the highest standards and practices, and I let the side down. Simple as that. I'm sorry I had to break out my terrible English accent. I do apologize to all of the listeners from England. I know it's a really horrible, 
terrible English accent, but I can't help it. That's what I hear in my voice, in my head when I, when I'm reading this, I hear his stupid voice in my head and he sounds, it makes me want to punch him right in the face. After the Newsnight interview, what, uh, after the Newsnight interview was broadcast in November, several of Andrew's business sponsors for his Pitch at Palace initiative announced they would no longer back the project. Many of his loyal patronages also sought to distance themselves from him, and he eventually announced he was stepping down from all his patronages in his royal duties. Meanwhile, Miss Roberts, now known by her married name, Virginia Giffrey, gave her own interview to Panorama in which she insisted the Duke was lying when he denied meeting her. And then if you watch both of the interviews, folks, and like we all have, you can see how uncomfortable Andrew was as, a, as opposed to the, the anger and the pure fire that Virginia Roberts was spitting. And you could tell the pain. Just look at Virginia Roberts' face in any one of these interviews and look at the pain in this poor girl's face. The, the, what she's had to go through for standing up to these people is absolutely absurd. It makes me so mad. It makes me so disgusted that the Crypt Keeper, Alan Dershowitz, the tidy whitey wearing sicko, would a- have the audacity to talk all sorts of trash about this young lady. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, Miss Roberts has insisted she, the Duke was lying when he denied meeting her. She said he had felt ashamed and dirty after they had sex, adding, I had just been abused by a member of the royal family. I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I had just been abused by a member of the royal family. Think about that, folks. Think about how chilling that is. A lot of you out there have daughters. A lot of you have sisters, we all have mothers, we all have, you know, aunts, cousins, whatever it may be. Think about them having the same treatment by Jeffrey Epstein. Think about somebody you care about for a minute. Put yourself in the shoes of these people. There's no redress, there's no recourse. What can they do? They went to the authorities, nothing. They went to the media, nothing. They went to everybody they possibly could go to, nothing. Well, guess what? That party, that's over. Because independent content creators, we're stepping in to fill in the gap. We're stepping in to tell these people, we're here, we're going to report on this story, and that's just the end of it. Nobody can stop us. I don't have any sort of editor. I don't have anybody who's telling me what I can or can't report on. And I can. I plan on continuing to be that way, to be very independent from any sort of influence of trying to get me knocked off of course. Because it is way, way too important and we are way too late in the game for anything like that to occur we are right we're moving the ball folks i've told you it's like a football game it's like a tactical game of football might only get a couple yards per carry but guess what positive yards get them first downs play those sticks keep them out of the end zone and that's basically what's going on on a daily basis we're not going to let up the the whole entire the whole entire story is just beginning. I mean, we pull on one thread and we end up somewhere completely else. So the battle is on. And I know that you folks are ready. You folks are biting down on your mouthpiece. And I'm doing the same thing because I, I, can't, I, can't, uh, I can't stand by and just let this occur. I can't stand by while these people are walking, walking the streets. I cannot. It, I, it's just... I can't come to grips with that, that that's the reality that we live in. I don't, I refuse to believe that as a nation, we're going to let this occur. And I'm going to do everything I possibly can to keep this story in the public view. I'm going to do everything I possibly can to keep this story out there. And I'm going to keep on talking about it, even if I'm deplatformed. Even if they, they take away my show, even if they deplatform me, you can find me on Las Vegas Boulevard with a bullhorn spreading the word because I've had enough. I've just, I'm just fed up and this is, this is how, this is how I fight back. This is my, my way of telling them to screw off. This is my way of telling the elites that we're onto them and that's it. And that's just the end of it because what they've done to Virginia Roberts, what they've done to these other girls, what people like Harvey Weinstein and Nexium have done, it is just unconscionable. And what's even worse is the fact that they were protected by certain politicians and they were protected by their friends in the media. Well, that's coming to an end, folks. This is this year, 2020. You know what's going down. Everyone in the back, say it loud with me. We're turning predators into prey in 2020. 
If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. And if you would like to help support the show, you can click on the GoFundMe link in the description box. I will be back tomorrow morning for some more Raging Against the Machine.